I spread the miracle. I spread the miracle. Hey. I spread the miracle. Hey. I spread the miracle. Hey. <laughs> I go higher than I it. thought you were. I was <laughs> waiting on it. I was waiting on it. Do it for the hood folk. Yeah, yeah. What's up, hood folks? It's your boy Rashad. And this is Jeremy, and we are here to report the 5 o'clock action news. Today on the news, we have a couple topics that we're going to talk about, and then we're going to get right into your forecast for the rest of the weekend, and we hope that you have amazing... I'm just oh, so it's going to go up later, because I'm looking at the time, and it ain't no five. It ain't even close to five o'clock. Miss, do you know everything is pre-recorded, <laughs> prepared? <laughs> now, hey, what's up, hood folks? So, we are chilling here on a good early Wednesday morning, y'all. I woke up, and I woke me some... Well, Sonny got these little pickles, fried pickles. I, I, this all I want, some fried pickles. Don't you want some fried pickles? No, I don't want no fried pickles from no damn Sonic. Ugh, low budget. Low budget. I'm telling you, it's always... Anyway, they pickle fries are good. Yeah, I like fried pickles. I like fried pickles. So, uh, the, yesterday I did a video of us getting our hair cut. Well, mostly me, I was the star of the video because y'all know this used to be my channel, Jeremy Hollywood, before I told people about Rashad. You know, do y'all remember this night right here? Baby, make your pants on live. Y'all. Is it my hand? I wish it was a hand. These hands can work a bit good. <laughs> These hands are ski. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Anyway, y'all, let me introduce y'all to my baby. Come here, baby. Y'all ready? Come here, baby. Damn. Y'all look at my baby. Come over, baby. They can't see you. Y'all, the cameraman like to suck dick. <laughs> The cameraman like to suck dick, y'all. <laughs> Uh, what was that? 928. Y'all, I've been trying to get away from this motherfucker for years. I've been trying to give me some pussy. And... What? Oh, what's going on, bro? Knew it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. fuck all y'all motherfuckers talking about y'all knew it. You ain't knew shit. You ain't knew a motherfucker day. We still, we're coming to y'all to tell that little puss up together. It's <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember that night? That was my first night telling people about my lifestyle. People think I had this big story of, you know, telling everybody about my lifestyle and telling everybody about, ooh, you live like, uh-uh. I ain't never, t I'm gonna hit the microphone. My bad. I ain't never telling nobody nothing. And then I told y'all on YouTube and I introduced y'all to Rashad. So how did you feel that night? I don't know. I felt weirded out. Um, Like, I don't know. I was just, because I was kind of camera shy. As it was already. I didn't want to be on the camera. I didn't want to really be, uh, you know, have my face out there. Because I, I, I just enjoy being the cameraman. Anyway, um, I was nervous that entire week. If you watched that vlog, I put it that week. I was nervous that entire week because I knew I was going to tell y'all about Rashad. And it's funny because on our first, my first live that I ever done on YouTube was me introducing the world to him. As, as us as a couple, and we got a whole influx of the LGB community. And then when they saw what kind of mindset we had, especially us, that we wasn't the stereotype, we weren't doing the lip gloss challenge, we weren't doing the yoga challenge, we weren't following the crowd, we weren't doing pranks, I'm leaving you for a white person, you know, all that stuff. Then people like, oh no, no, this ain't the channel for us. So all the LGB, they like, yeah, we gonna tap out, even though we still got a good audience. But a lot of the gay folks was like, nah, we, that ain't our type of channel. Then when we say we identify as bi, oh, that's all. Uh, that, that, oh, no, 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 no. Which leads me to my first topic. Do you think there is a gay agenda in the black community? Ooh, all that noise out there. For no reason. By the way, do you think there's a gay agenda? 
Uh, when you say gay agenda, elaborate on that. Okay, you know, like in today's society, they spend in there today. Everybody black is every black man is gay. They, you know, they pushing all this gay blackness. They pushing all this gayness on the black kids. They making little boys thinking they get confused and what have you. Me personally, I do not think there's no gay agenda because every community has gay, trans, bi, lesbian. Every community has it. White folks, Mexican, Asian. If you go to any map on the earth, you can find some gay, lesbian, trans. You can find that all over the world. So I don't think there's no uh, gay agenda on black men or black boys. But I do think there is an attack on black male masculinity. Hands down, they turn into toxic masculinity. I hate that fucking term. And I hate to hear a man say, oh, that's toxic masculinity. I hate that. I do think there's an attack on black male masculinity because if you present, even though, even though y'all know I don't care what people think, I don't live that kind of life. But when you spin a narrative, if you take a weak, soft black man and you make him cowardly, sissified and stuff, I feel like the world will push over on this man more than an alpha, strong black man that ain't falling for the okie doke the bullshit. I think they I think that is a threat. A black strong alpha man who's standing for what he believe in, that is a threat versus a feminine, soft, pushy over type man. And I feel like that is what's being attacked. Now, I don't like the fact that I'm finna hush and let you get your time. Damn. I don't like the fact now if you do this stuff, don't get in your feelings. Cause it's my opinion. I don't like how they pushing me and paint their fingernails. Paint their toenails, men getting eyebrow arches and wearing purses. And I, I don't like them. none of that stuff is, is appeasing to me. Now, if you do it, don't stop doing it because I said stop doing it. You should continue to do it and make you happy. But that's how I feel. Now, how do you feel? <laughs> so, um, I had to re, re I had to think about what I was going to say. Oh, you uh, said I talk a lot? Yeah, you were talking a lot. <laughs> but um, when it comes to uh, the the gay agenda, um, it, it, it's how you look at it. Um, like they said, uh, like Jeremy said, that, you know, every community has it. Um, you know, they have, you know, gay people in their communities. I'm um, not saying anything about that. Um, but I do think that it is... Um, they are trying to, uh, demasculize, demasculize men, like black men, because they know us as black men, our, our, you know, our background, our history, we are strong. We are the most athletic. We are the most feared. Uh, and you know, we, we just the strongest, um, in a, in a lot of cases, as far as our mentality and our bodies. So they want to demasculate us just because of that reason, because they don't want us to, they don't want black men, I should say, to really have that power. So they try any and everything to, to, to make us weak, to make us soft. Um, so yeah, when it comes to the, uh, you know, the demasculine, demasculine shit, Anyway, toxic masculinity. That's what we're going to say. It, to, to try to make us less masculine than we are. I'm going to just leave it at that. More, more less masculine than we are. They they are pushing uh, pushing that agenda. Uh, but as far as a gay agenda, I don't think so. And then also, yeah, all this, um, you know, I don't know where black men or any man, but we're talking about us as black men. I don't know where we get the point of get to the point where we shaving every last bit of our body hair, what like that? shaving our body hair, like we, oh yeah, like no, not having hair on our chest. Like me, I, I love my hair on my chest; it's not going away. You know, a lot of people don't like to have facial hair. Some people say, "Oh, it's because of my profession." But in a lot of professions nowadays, this is not back in the 40s. This is not back in the 50s, 60s, or 70s. Even early uh, 1990s. This is not that anymore. The world has evolved to the point where 
you know, you can have uh, facial hair as long as you're keeping it clean cut. You know, and then, uh, yeah, but so, yeah, when it comes to making us less masculine and to make us weak, yes, that that is, they are pushing that. But the gay agenda in our community, I don't think they're pushing it. You know what they say? Not as much, no. I want to ask one question, though. When it comes to shaving your body hair off, women and men, where the hell do all that hair go? Because I know we take a shower twice a day, and, you know, we got a little thing that catches the hair, but we don't even got body hair, and we don't shave, but it still be hair in the, in the drain. So where do all the hair go when you shave your body hair off? I know them drain be clogged up like they arteries. And I want to make, I want to ask another quick question to all the barbers who do shave. I hope y'all motherfuckers not shaving your pubic hairs and your ass hairs with the same hairs that you edge us up with and you cut our hair. <laughs> I do not want to smell no damn dick on my lip when you cut my damn uh, hair. Stop! <laughs> Shit, but yeah. That's While it. we on the topic, I do want to throw this in there too. Now, um, somebody asked us, we just going about, we're going to do topics that people ask us randomly of how do we feel about uh, if we had kids that was transgender on the age, how do we feel about little boys want to be little girls and little girls want to be little boys and all that kind of stuff? How do we feel about that if we had underage kids that wanted to do gender reassignment and all that kind of stuff? How do you feel about that? Okay, so this is a um, this is to folks who watch this and they don't like what I say. Please don't get into the comments. With the negativity, we just giving our opinions. It's like, Bob, go to the park. You we don't all, give a fuck. Uh, no, no. It's because you have <laughs> opinions, go. your own opinions as well. But me personally, I think that that is a, uh, not a disgrace, but that is abusive. And then y'all want to talk about how, you know, people are not raising their kids right. You know, you need a, the, the parent in the house. You know, both parents in the house to to be able to raise a kid, so on and so forth. And they talking, they, you know, they talk all hell about that. But this, I think, is abusive because a kid is 13, 12, 15, 16. They still living in your house. You still purchasing their clothes. You're feeding them, and you you know you're providing for them. That's what we supposed to do. You know, that's what you're supposed to do as a parent. Um. Now, when they come up with situations like, oh, I want to be a man. I want to be, girl, for instance, I want to be a man. I want to I want to get a, 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 a penis. For one, you too young to even know about that. Like, what you know about a penis? I mean, of course, they teach you to you, but how you know, you know, like, what do you know about having a penis? A man, the same thing. Oh, I want a coochie. <laughs> like, what do you know about what a coochie do? Like, I'm, I'm just want to know this because in situations like this, you do that to you. You allow that to happen to your kids. I think that's abusive. That's just like you hitting your kids for them doing, um, you know, doing something bad. You beating them. That, I feel that that is the same way allowing them to go and get surgically, you know, get surgical parts put on them um, at a young age because. At that young age, they can go through that and think it's all good, good, and then they get to the point they graduate in high school, they about to go to college, and then their whole mindset change. Like, oh damn, I don't. I, why did I do this to myself? And then they, you know, and then other things happen. But yeah, I don't. I I don't agree with it. I think that that is that is too young. Anybody under eighteen, I think that pe pe the parents should still be involved and say no. You need to think about your life first. You're still a kid. You're still a teenager. You're still going through school. Think about it. Then after school, when you're on your own, then we can discuss it further. I agree. Now, um, I got this tattoo of my hand, if y'all remember, back in 2021 for our, our what, fourth, wait, 10th anniversary, 11th anniversary, one of them anniversaries, shit, I can't remember, 13th, 13th, probably 13th anniversary. And... At first, when I got this tattoo, I was excited about getting this tattoo. And we got the same tattoo. But as I got back to the house that same day, and I saw how itchy this shit was, 2024, I regret getting this. 
I regret getting this tattoo right here. I wish I would got it on my arm like him, on my leg, somewhere else. I got this at the worst spot because I will use a lot of hand sanitizer and I use a lot of, you know, I wash my hands a lot. So this is itchy and it's real itchy. And I put lotion on it, but it's real itchy. We the got that during the pandemic, right? Yes. But the point I'm making is I changed my mind a lot. And I'm 42 years old. And I always saw if a kid is 13 today and want to be a, a 13 year old boy, want to be a girl, or a 14 year old girl, want to be a boy today, how about when they get out of high school and they realize that I don't want to be a boy no more, I don't want to be a girl no more, and they go through this mental whatever. So if I had a kid that came, a 13 year old son, and told me he wanted to be a, a girl, I would say, I understand, son. Okay. But you're not going to do no kind of change until you get 18. Once you get 18, you can go out to the street and pop that pussy everywhere you want to, bitch. I'm going to call you a bad bitch. And if I had a little 14-year-old daughter told me that she want to be a son, I'm going to say, wait till you get 18. You can slain that dick all over the city. But until then, you got to go by my rules. I always feel like if my child get up one morning... They got a rash. They didn't had the surgery. They got a rash or something. Now I got to deal with this. I don't want to be going to the doctor dealing with this. Or if they have a mental breakdown, I don't want to be dealing with this at all. So I personally do not support underage kids doing no kind of surgery or doing that. When you get 18, get grown. But I also, on the flip side, do shout out Dwayne Wade for supporting his kid. Now, I wouldn't just throw my child out. In the, in the gutter, say, get the fuck out. But I would be strongly against it. Just like me and my mama. My mama's strongly against my lifestyle with him. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, it is what it is. That's just how I feel about it. Okay, so I'm just saying that, yeah, I, I see where you, um, your your point is coming to. It, 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 it aligns with mine, which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, folks. And looking at the title of this video... Will you offer forgiveness to someone that purposely or carelessly hurt your family member, taking, took them out, you know, took them out, murder, what have you? Uh, I saw this story, which you see this picture on the screen right here. Uh, this officer, what was his name? His uh, name was Officer David Lee. Uh, he was from St. Louis, Missouri, and he was conducting like um, a traffic. He was in, in traffic and it was raining, what have you. And a drunk driver came along drunk driving in the rain driving like a fool and literally hit this police officer and killed him um that situation is awful it's trash but i think the thing that made me do i was reading the article and i know the wife says she you know they've been together for a long time and the wife you know she's she's really heartbroken about losing her husband to a drunk driver but she the thing that got me the most, that irritated me the most, was she was like, to the guy, the loser who killed him, we forgive you. Why are you looking at that? No. No. <laughs> no. I can tell y'all this. Uh, personally, back in 2019, my sister was, in, was driving one night, and some guy was drunk, right? And he had a head-on collision with her, right? And she didn't die. You know, she never became, she was never the same again. Never the same again, right? Right. And then just in 2022, she went on and died. Oh, uh, the person who did that to her, I have no inkling of forgiveness for him. It's that to the point where if I was to see this person, Jason, Michael Miles, check it. You get the point. I don't have no forgiveness in my heart for nobody who purposely hurt me. I don't know where, I don't, I don't, there's one thing about the Bible I never understood, turn the other cheek and stuff. In my heart, I have forgiveness and mercy for people if you do something to me and you accidentally, you know, I was doing this and I accidentally dropped this on you. I accidentally shot them. If it was an accident, you didn't do it on purpose and you wasn't careless, I got forgiveness for you. But if you're doing some shit being stupid and on purpose, I have no forgiveness and I hate that thing. Forgiveness ain't for you, it's for them. It ain't for them, for you. Fuck all that religious bullshit. If I was going to offer forgiveness to a person, I wouldn't publicly say it. It wouldn't be no publicly bullshit. So no, I, I'm, I don't have no forgiveness in my heart for people who purposely hurt me. I have transmissions 
hollow points, rippers. You forgot tires. Tires. That's part of the car. <laughs> but you just said the transmission. That could be on no, their I back. I thought you was going to pull that motherfucker out and throw it and lay no, it on their ass. I put the transmission on their back by running over so far. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I know y'all think I joke a lot, but no. I have no, no, no. That's how I operate in life. How about you? So, in this situation, um, and I, I've said this on another situation that I, I, I think I've talked about uh, probably a year, two, three years ago. But no, I will not. And I repeat, I will not forgive that per person because they did it carelessly. They were drinking and driving, which you shouldn't be doing in the first place. That's the number one. Uh, but you know, a lot of people are going to say, oh, he's young. He's, um, you know, he's don't know what he's doing. It doesn't matter. Obviously he was, um, raised wrong. Like he didn't have no kind of structure in his, uh, in his life, uh, as he was growing up. Because if he did, they, he would know I, I'm drunk. I don't need to drive. Me personally, um, I, if that was my father, no, he would not get any um, any kind of forgiveness. And if my mother, like the wife, and you know, my condolences to her, and I hope she gets through this tough patch. But if she was my mother and she uh, said that, I would tell her, I don't know what's wrong with you, mom. He do not deserve your forgiveness. He can ask the Lord for forgiveness, but as far as getting it from you, no, you, he, nah, not at all. Because that was very careless of that, that dude. I think he was Hispanic. Um, it was very careless of him to be drinking and driving. And then obviously he was probably speeding. Um, and then lost like, that's just dumbness. No, you do not get that respect. Uh, you do not get that forgiveness from me. And that goes for anybody who does anything. For example, I'm walking my dog. And I love this dog to death. Just say I love, I don't, that's not true. I'm just saying, say if I love this dog to death, I, you know. Anyway, so somebody, I'm walking them, somebody driving fast and I'm turning the corner. They just turning around the corner doing donuts in a community. Like, Skrr! and then they hit my dog. Oh man, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I forgive you. Hell nah. I hope your ass ride back by here again so I can, anyway, but no, you don't get my forgiveness. And that goes for family members, especially my family members. I'll kill for my family members. So yeah, fuck up if you want to, but other than that, you're not getting my forgiveness. You'll get, like you said, hollow points, knives and backs, hatchets, shovels, bricks. So yeah. That's true. And I tell you one of the most disappointing things that made me so sick to the stomach, that made me extremely mad. I'm not going to do a clip of it because I don't want it to be in this video. Is when Botham Jean's brother asked to hug Amber Geiger in the jail, in the courthouse, and he hugged her and stuff. And I was, can I hug her, please? Can I? I mean, that right there. And then I saw so many motherfucking black church folk. Oh my God, that's big. The Lord is smiling down. Why wasn't the Lord smiling down when the police was shooting him and killing them? All that, I, I'm telling you, I know y'all getting y'all feeling. I still believe in God. I would never turn my back on God. But religion and God ain't the same thing. Religion has been the most bullshittest, worst thing ever given to black people. No. So I don't have no forgiveness. Nothing but... <laughs> oh, look at that right there. I put that over. I slap him with that. Push him down. <laughs> but yeah, so about religion. Yes. Uh, religion has gotten us confused. Has really messed up uh, our lives our livelihoods um, because I always look at it when it comes to religion about special forgiveness stuff. We were told to forgive and forget in the slave days. And I'm about to say this real quick, right? But y'all can kill us, rape our uh, wives and oh, that's fine. But then we kill you. Oh no, you're going to go to hell for that. You better watch what you do. God don't like that. Didn't make sense to me, and all y'all just look at that, and I'm just I'm about to be done. All all you religious folks that look at that, and y'all won't think about that about what happened during slavery, about how they used that against us. It was okay for them to do it. They was treating the Bible like they were the gods, and we slaves are just supposed to abide by it, but they don't have to. 
Y'all forget about that. But anyway, I'm I'm done because I don't want to go into that situation. So I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Because <sighs> I was about to get real deep into it and I can't. Oh, CD fakes. When you at the party with Diddy? <laughs> Speaking of that, a lot of people want us to go harder. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. It's already 3,004 black people roasting the shit out of Diddy. You know, if he wrong, he filed, good for him. Put him in jail. Take him about this bitch. I have no, I have no like saving him because a lot of people think that when I call out, you know, when I call out other races of people who do things that you, you that trying to take up for our Kennedy. You that trying to take up for Diddy. You that, what wrong with you? You strange old app. It ain't that. It's that, this how I see it. It could be five people standing here and they could be all different races. A Mexican, a white person, an Asian, a Chinese, a black person, whatever. They can all be doing the exact same wrong. The exact same wrong. But if a black person see them doing the exact same wrong, the black person is only going to have smoke for the black person. They're not going to have nothing to say about the clear. I hate when black people say that. Clear people, mayo, YT, protect, complexion for the protect. I hate all that dumb ass shit. I don't say none of that goofy shit. But they only have smoke for the black person. But then the Mexican, the Asian, they won't have no smoke for them and they doing the exact same thing. How I'm telling you is all five of them should be fucked up equally. And that's why I'm not doing no video on no Puffy and all that kind of stuff. Because if I'm going to do it on Puffy, we need to do it on Hugh Hefner. We need to do it on Harvey Weinstein. You know, see what I'm saying? But black folks only have smoke for other black people. And then you got all the other races of people got smoke for black people too. It ain't, the smoke ain't never the same. No, it ain't never the same. If you're going to get one, get them all. And if you only going to set something by one, shut the fuck up. Whew. I agree. We, and the last thing I'm going to say is we got an email from somebody asking, do you think that we'll ever figure life out? Do you think we'll ever be fulfilled totally in life? Do you think we'll ever get to the point where we are content? We just going to stay like this forever and get up out of here. And the answer to me is no. Number one, nobody has life figured out that's living. The only people in my opinion who have life figured out are people who are dead. Nobody living has life figured out. And I always feel like that we are always be searching for the next whatever it is through our whole life. Like take for example, Shaquille O'Neal, right? Shaquille O'Neal started off being a basketball player, right? Yes. And then he went to being a rapper. Then he went to being an actor. And then now he a business owner. He be in all kind of commercial. I saw him in a commercial for, uh, what you call it, ink, ink for printers. And then he was in a car insurance commercial. And then he was in a commercial for, uh, what you call it, and Hot. He's just like, he just always doing something. Don't you think Shaq got got a lot of money already? Yes. When he, I'm just saying, do you think he had enough money when he stopped playing basketball to take care of him the rest of his life? Yes. He had to do no more working. So why is he constantly just looking for another job? Look, Because I feel like in life, no matter if you're rich or poor, you're going to always be searching. We got a house. We got a car. You know, our bank account is real low. Send us some money. But, you know, we got that. But at the same time, I'm still looking for the next. We're going to always be looking for the next, number one, because we want that life fulfillment. I feel like we want that life fulfillment, number one. And then number two, I just feel like people, you get bored. Mm -hmm. You want you want to do something else. You feel like you got other stuff in you to do. So nobody has it all together. Don't be fooled by these goof ass folks on the internet that make you think that yeah, I got 17 high year savings account. I got all this money in the bank. I got my whole life planned out. Everything is beautiful in my life. I have no problem. And then you go right on that cholesterol so high out of here just like that. Motherfucker got the sugar just Risk is broke so much sugar in the end. I'm just <laughs> okay. Let me be serious. Let me stop joking. But nobody has it all together. You don't have to be jealous of nobody. I okay, I gotta stop saying you. I am not jealous of nobody because I know people don't have it all together. Nobody has figured life out. Nobody is perfect. So I think you'll always be searching for life fulfillment. What do you think? I think the same exact thing. I'm not going to go too far ahead. I wish you would stop saying go too far. Bob, go deep inside. Didn't I tell you the other day? Divide and hide. I thought it was divide and conquer. No. Divide and hide. When you go in. Okay. Go okay. <laughs> Bring it back Seriously. to memories. Okay. <clears throat> but, uh, but, yeah, so um, uh, back to what Jeremy said, I don't think that we will ever find that fulfillment in life. Um just because we'll we'll always be searching for something else. You know, even people who who retire, 
and normal people, not even people, millionaires. I'm talking about people who, you know, are content with the money that they have made in life. They retire, they sit at home and they chill. They be like, oh, this is the life I wanted. Then it clicks. No, I need to do something else. I want to do something else. You know, and I don't seen this firsthand of people actually retiring, but still like, no, I'm not, I don't want to be retired anymore. I want to go back into doing something, you know? So yeah, you will never find that fulfillment in life. Um, and, uh, it's, it's okay not to, you know, it, it really is okay. Well, you know? I think, I think you said the wrong thing. What you mean? I think people will find fulfillment in life. But they want more fulfillment. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what I mean. <laughs> You'll find the fulfillment, but you like you conquered this, and now you want to conquer something else. I don't exactly. think a, I think people will conquer something and like, okay, that's amazing. Now I want to conquer something else. I think we will always want to conquer something as long as we are living and alive. Yeah, that's that's what I meant, and I, I, I was it was all off. I didn't mean to say what I said, but like conquering retirement, being able to retire with a nice size pension. And good plans and stuff like that. But then you just, you know, you're like, okay, I did it. Now, what else can I do? What else do I want to do? Oh, I'm a, I want to do this. So, so yeah, that's what I uh, I really meant. So, yeah. All right, Hoofo. So, that's what we were just thinking about this morning. Drop in the comments and give us your opinion about what you feel. Even if you think differently from how we feel, that's okay. Just don't get in the comments and tell us, oh, no, y'all, no, no. then you get blocked. But other than that, if you got your opinion or how you feel about whatever we talk about, you can have your opinion. We can still be friends. We can respect each other and be different. We don't, we're don't. we not Siamese twins. We're not stuck at the head. Let's have, let's have surgery. Get this. Ah, we got surgery. We here. God damn, I'm glad because my head was hurting carrying that dinner plate. I always think that if somebody's Siamese twins and they... Nothing. Don't, okay. No. I don't want. See, I'm not don't. talking. About, I'm not talking about that part. I'm thinking about this. The actual Siamese twin being stuck together. That make my flesh crawl. But I often say, if Siamese twin together and they got two different partners, how do you be turning your head while your sister or brother tan getting toe out? Like, oh, oh, oh. Like, can y'all? Didn't I say no? Bitch, I ran out. Of this, we ran out of this channel. Also, before we go, hood folks, I want to shout out Ramona Smalls. We appreciate you, Ramona Smalls, for uh, supporting us and the message that you sent us. We do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, and we appreciate all the hood folks, you Ooh. know, who really has been there and, and watched us and support us. So, thank you, everyone. Shout out to all y'all. Yes. Yes. So, uh, tell them what they need to do, man, when we get to Sonic. I want my pickles. I want my pickles. I want my pickles. I give you a pickle. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> a juicy one. Oh, <laughs> Uh, oh anyway, God, God, folks, God. I'm not plant based today, man. I want meat. I want, oh man, that's even worse. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm fasting and praying. I'm a fast. I'm I a, got some spam for you. <laughs> Either way, you goofy, man. Like, comment, shit. Like, comment, subscribe, and press that ugly ass bell button. It look like his nose to get notified whenever we put up new content on his page. Y'all didn't feel good doing this video without eating. Because I didn't want to eat on the video because if we were eating, I probably wouldn't have got all my points out. And I would have been like smacking, chewing fake and stuff. I want to, I want to go eat my pickles. <laughs> anyway, we'll see y'all next time. Have a good Wednesday. Thank y'all for watching.